What is up you guys? It's Bob. And in this video, we're gonna be going over how credit works. Because when I turned 18, the essentially what I was told was to go get some credit cards. And that was it. I didn't know why. I know it, it improved a score of something. And that's a good thing. But you know, credit is actually really important because if you don't have good credit and you don't know how it works, you're never really gonna be able to build wealth, right? If you don't have good credit, you're gonna end up getting crappier loans, which means you're going to be paying more interest, which means you're not going to be making as much money on any investments you might want to make, whether it be an actual investment property or just a house or a car. You're going to end up paying more for this stuff, which is going to make it so much more difficult to become one of the bourgeoisie, right? You're going to be stuck in that proletariat lifestyle. It's filled with like, I don't know, like, like potatoes and like Whopper juniors. And, and I want you, I want you to have better than that. Okay. So, Let's learn how credit works and a little bit as to how you can improve it. All right, but what is your credit score actually made up of? Well, it's made up of five different things. The first one, the biggest one, is your payment history. Are you actually making payments on the things that you owe? The second is your credit utilization rate, uh, which is how much credit are you actually using that's being given to you? This one I'll go into in a minute. The third one is your length of credit history. How long have you had credit? Basically, if you've had credit for 20 years, um, you have a better, longer track record than someone who's had it for two weeks. So this improves your score. Um, the fourth one is the number of credit lines you have. Do you have one credit card or do you have 10? The more you have, the, the better score you got. Well, we can go into why that can actually make sense in a minute. The fifth one is your credit mix. Are you just using credit cards? Or are you also doing student debt, mortgage loans, car loans, all this different stuff? Basically, if you can handle many different types of debt at once, they'll think, well, this person's better at paying things off. All right, let's go a little bit into each one a little bit more. The first one, the biggest one, payment history, coming in at 35% of your total score. Basically, pay off everything. Pay off everything on time. You can do the minimum payment if you have to. I don't suggest it but you can and won't affect you negatively, at least your credit score, okay? Now, this thing says that 99% will still put you in the good, which means if you have 100 transactions and you mess up on one, you'll still be in the good zone. But I don't know about that because I've missed one payment in my life, which I wasn't even supposed to pay because I couldn't inhabit the apartment complex, guys, uh, which makes it to where you can't really uh, charge me, but... I guess that's neither here nor there because that destroyed my credit. Like didn't destroy it, but it's not, it's not good. It wasn't, it wasn't very good after that. And I have paid off everything else. I am at like 99.99, maybe an extra 9% payment history and it nailed it. So if you have an issue with a payment on anyone and it's threatening you take you to the credit bureau and it goes all the way to the debt collectors. Okay. Just pay them basically. And then you can fight them afterward but don't let them hit that credit. Don't, do not let them hit this part because it will just tank you for like seven years. So now the second thing that builds your credit score is your credit utilization rate. Now this one was a little bit tough for me, um, but essentially what it means is let's say you get a credit card and they give you a $10,000 limit. So you can buy $10,000 worth of stuff on this thing. Now let's make this, instead of a credit card, a giant cake, right? And this cake has 10,000 slices in it. And essentially what the credit card company does is they say, okay, here's a giant cake with 10,000 slices on it. I'm sure you're going to do great. But if you eat this entire cake, I'm totally going to judge you for it. In which case you take this cake and you go, wait, that, I mean, that's kind of mean. Like you, you're giving me this giant cake and you're going to judge me for it. And they're like, yes, the more of it you, you eat, the more I'm going to judge you for it. In fact, if you eat more than 10% of this cake, I'm going to start docking your credit score. Yeah, fatty. What do you think about that? Well, you're going to go, I don't like this very much. This is kind of mean. This cake is a lie. You're acting like this is some type of celebration, but it's not. Um, well, here's the logic behind it. The logic behind it is, okay, they give you this giant cake, but you really shouldn't eat the entire cake. And here's the other thing. Let's say you are the second creditor and you're gonna, you're prepared to give this person a second cake of another 10,000 slices. Your issue will be, is there anything stopping this guy from eating the other cake as well? Basically what they're looking for is discipline. Are you disciplined enough 
to not just try and max out the credit cards as much as you possibly can whenever you're given it. Because here's the thing, just because you can increase your credit, that does not mean your income went up, right? Just because you've been given more junk food does not mean you're going to go and work out more and do all those things you got to do to stay healthy. So it actually makes them nervous. And as I was saying before with the cake is you actually really need to stay under 10% uh, of your total rate. Now this is really hard, especially when you're starting out, but when you're starting out, you generally don't need those bigger loans. Like when I started out, it was only like 2,500 bucks, but then I would apply for a credit increase by going on like my app, my mobile app or my doing mobile banking. You can just click a couple buttons, whichever bank and it'll go up. Now onto the third thing, your credit history. Now what you might think is, oh, well, that's just how long I've been doing uh, credit things, right? So if I started at 18, then now I'm, you know, 25, then I uh, it's seven. No, actually. So they take the average of your credit history. So let's say you have three lines of credit, and it doesn't have to be a credit card. It could be, it could be a credit card. It could be a mortgage for a house. It could be a car payment. And one of them is a year old. You've had the credit card for a year. Uh, the mortgage, you've been paying it for two years, and the car you've had for three years, right? Add them all up, you take the average, it's two. That's how long they're gonna gauge your credit history. Now, the maximum to get you into the excellent zone is over nine years. And then it keeps going down from there. You can see it in the chart of what goes on. So the takeaway from this is when you turn 18, or as soon as you can, as soon as you can, get as many lines of credit as you can. And the easiest way to do is just go get credit cards because it doesn't actually cost anything. Or at least it doesn't have to. You can go get the credit cards that don't cost anything. And just use them once in a while. You can actually ask the bank, hey, how much do I have to use this before you like turn it off? And one of them was like two years that I got. So I just, I, you know, I just plugged it away in a safe spot and gave myself a reminder. Hey, Bob, in two years, go buy a stick of gum with this credit card and, and then pay it off. And that's it. This is really going to pay off for you in the long term. So do it now. It's the easiest thing. It doesn't have to cost you anything. All right. Number four, the number of credit lines you have actually increases your credit score, believe it or not. So basically what that means is if you have 10 credit cards, that is more valuable to the creditors than having one credit card. Now you might think, well, Hey, wait a minute. This is all just a ruse. This is just a ruse to make me, you know, enslaved to the man, right? Well, I'm not going to completely fight you on this, but <laughs> let's say you're a creditor and you're and you're getting more people to use your credit card. You got two guys. One of them has one credit card and the other guy has 10 credit cards. Both of them pay off their cards perfectly. Now, which one is more difficult to do? Paying off 10 credit cards or paying off one credit card consistently? Well, it's gonna be the 10. So if you're gonna give this guy an 11th credit card, you're probably feeling like he can handle this. He's doing the other 10, whereas the other guy's doing one, and it's like, well, maybe you can just handle one. I don't know. That is the logic behind it, because it is more difficult to do. You clearly have a discipline to it. Again, it's discipline, and that will increase your score. Now, it does take 21. It takes 21 <laughs> lines of credit. That is high. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That's very high. Now... Do mind you, it doesn't have to be 21 credit cards. It can be anything. It can be credit cards. It can be mortgages. It can be car payments. It can be student loans. It can be medical loans. It can be anything that is a line of credit. Okay. Um, you can even be on other people's credit cards um, as a tack on. And actually, that's a great way to increase your credit score. So here's the thing that I'm going to remind you is 21 lines is probably a lot, especially if you're young, even if you're old. So remember it's only 10% and that a score basically over 800 doesn't really help you anymore. I haven't found anything that was like, oh, your score is over 800 in like 10 or 20. Oh, I'll give you even more. No, it's basically 800 is the max. So don't sweat it. You don't have to get 21. It's just if you're that person that's really striving to get an 850. Okay, next. Now the fifth one, the last one, which is your credit mix. And you know we're at the end of the video because my computer decided to change the background. I don't know why. I don't know how. It just kind of does that. I th think it's gained sentience. I think the screen is too big. And because it has a big screen, it is a, a, a wider berth. 
you know, of, of its understanding of how things work, and I think it's gonna kill me. But what I'm more concerned about is your credit mix. Because if you have a more diverse credit mix, you will actually have a better credit score, believe it or not. The reasoning behind this is it shows that you are good with different types of debt in paying those different types of debt because they aren't all paid the same way. You don't pay your house off like you pay your credit card off, like you don't necessarily pay off your car, your student loans, or your medical. It shows that you know how to budget these and, and then pay all of them off and do it consistently. So by having many different kinds, that actually improves your credit score. Now, again, if you're younger and you can only have credit cards because you don't have a house, you don't have the car, and all these things, don't worry about it. It's 10%. You'll get there eventually, unless, of course, you can be a baller and buy it all cash. In which case, I guess you win. So long as you never, ever, ever need a loan. Hey, you should hit that like button. You, you know I did. I hit that like button. I, I trunked that like button. Wow. Well, thanks. Thanks, Elephant. That, that, that's, that's a great, that's a great, uh, that's a great thing you did there. Um, did, did you also hit subscribe? Did, yeah? D d no. No, no, I didn't. Dude, I'm trying to grow my channel. Why, why, why didn't you hit subscribe? Because your voice is stupid and these, these bits are dumb. This is a dumb bit. Man, I'm just trying have a little entertainment with finance. I mean, finance is kind of dry. Stop! I liked it. That's enough. That's enough. I'm leaving. I'm gonna go do elephant stuff. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you want.